Hi, this is Dennis Wilborn. Welcome to Active Trend Trading. I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope the video you're about ready to watch provides additional information about how to train yourself to become a profitable trader. Aloha. Okay, good day, everybody. Uh, we're about five minutes early, or three minutes early before we get started. Uh, I just wanted to do the administrative stuff of checking in. And uh, would also like you to uh, uh, just say hello when you first check in. That way we'll be, uh, that way I'll know who's online. I'd appreciate that. Please introduce yourself. When you log on. <laughs> okay. Hey, Michael. We get him going right at the right at the bottom of the quarter on the quarter hour and Michael can you both see the screen and hear uh, hear me Test, test, test. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Got a couple of minutes left to go, about a minute left to go. And again, if you would, uh, when you're checking in, just please just uh, shoot me a little more note that says, good day, hello, that way I know who's online. Appreciate that. Thanks, Mark. Aloha, Michelle. <clears throat> My yes, Eric, my bride has joined us. She's here. So okay, we. Um, as a matter of fact, she's going to be she's going to be start joining with a few of the webinars uh, going forward uh, to share uh, some of the information, share some of her experience uh, as she's learning how to trade futures and some of the great training that she's finding out there. Free training that we want to be able to share with uh, uh, share with folks out there. And uh, so let me see here. What am I doing? Michelle, Ann says, well, you can see it yourself. <laughs> okay, here we go. So good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Aftermarket Monday uh, webinar uh, for the Active Trend Traders. I'm Dennis Wilborn, uh, your host for the next about 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to be covering uh, some entities, how, this, how the market's doing, what to anticipate this this week, Um because this week is a holiday week. Trading stops tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time. So in other words, after 1 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow, no matter where you are, stop trading, 
and go out and enjoy the uh, thing, uh, the Fourth of July holiday. I want to remind everybody that all the materials we present are for training purposes only. Traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. Past performance does not guarantee future performance. So uh, the objective of After a Market Monday is to timely actionable intel at the beginning of each week. If you have questions or if you have a stock you want us to take a look at, please let uh, uh, um, please let uh, uh, you know just type in the ticker symbol. We have time to be able to take a look at those. Um, uh, typically, as long as it's only like one per person, that's about uh, it. And again, if you have not checked in and just you know typed in your you know typed in and said hi, please do that way. It gives me an idea who's online. I really appreciate that. We'll do a real quick market review. Um, what am I anticipating? The market is basically really trying to find its find its way. Um, those of you who do trade Tesla, uh, Tesla had a thirty dollar uh, a thirty dollar move today, up and down, and it did it in a fifteen dollar move up, which was almost a gap up. A thirty dollar move down, which was basically just just sell, 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 and then a ten dollar rebound from the uh, the selling. So really kind of interesting what's going on there. Uh, those of us who are trading Tesla with the strategy three uh, position, of course. You were paid very nicely. Uh, we made about $1,700 on that trade uh, that we put in place last Thursday. So then we'll take a look at some stocks ETF setting up for the week. So remember, in a environment like we have today, you're, we are best looking for support, resistance, and trade between those areas. When uh, a price action gets in the middle between uh, support and resistance, Back off, kind of leave it alone uh, unless you've got a really excellent uh, reversal signal going there. Have patience, stand back, respect the rhythm that the market's giving you. Uh, and the rhythm that we're seeing currently in the market is just, I'm going to just drill sideways or maybe a little slightly down, slightly up, but no real directional uh, strat um, traction. Three strategies we focus on, four entry rules, six exit rules. Keep it really simple. Uh, Strategy one, stocks and ETFs, portfolio building. We uh, actually issued a trade alert on um, the uh, uh, JNUG today on this particular uh, uh, strategy one. Strategy two, income trading. Um, basically, we're looking to generate somewhere between $500 to $1,000 per week. Right now, we're averaging $328 per week since the beginning of the year, primarily doing that with options uh, spreads and our directional options on weekly or monthly options. And strategy three, of course, foundation positions, Inspire, Tesla, Baba, uh, capital growth and weekly income. Tesla trades doing great, up over 50%. Spiders will start catching up with the uh, trade. We uh, took almost all of our profit off the table on the spiders uh, today, or it's almost all dwindled away. Baba, Looking for an opportunity to get into a trade on Baba for that one. Remember, there is no holy grail of trading, only tools and rules. And it, it all depends on how you apply them uh, to how well you do. Remember, almost every huge trading loss is a result of pride. Uh, almost every huge uh, trading loss is a result of overconfidence. And pride and overconfidence is basically the delusion that we are smarter than everyone else. And I'm talking to you engineers out there. You know who I'm talking about. I'm only kidding you guys. I'm an engineer too. So um, I, I do pick at us on our, because of our ivory tower syndrome sometimes. But remember, you know, we think we're smarter than everyone else, including God. And, and that typically doesn't work real well in a training environment. Here's where we sit. Dow's down for the year. S&P's up slightly for the year. NASDAQ up nicely for the year. NASDAQ Composite up nicely for the year. Russell up nicely for the year. Uh, we uh, are up about 20% halfway through the year. Uh, and remember, active trend trading, we target, we try to, we try to target 40% per year. That way I don't have to be in the market all the time. It makes it a little bit more manageable. And that's, you know, and that's exactly what we're looking at. So stocks and ETFs going into 
the first week in July. What are we thinking about? We are still seeing the tariff tango work out in the in the marketplace. Um, the noise that goes on, especially in the after hours, is what's spiking and driving this market. Very, very uh, uh, sensitive with a hair trigger to react uh, when anybody sends out a tweet or sends out news. Um, I, maybe they should take their mobile take the mobile phone away from all world leaders, and that way we wouldn't have to have that issue. But it does make trading fun. Oil and gold seasonality are we going? Is are we coming into the location where we're going to see a jump in both of those? We already saw a little bit of a jump in oil. Looking for a pullback in oil to be able to get long uh, for you know looking for another uh, twenty to twenty five dollars per gallon, perhaps by the end of the year to the upside. Um, and then earnings, we also want to be very uh, aware of that. Seasonal expectation, volatility continue, continue, continues high um, range. July moves in seasonality. That's what we're kind of waiting for, trying to be very, very patient. We just did a setup order on JNUG. I'm going to cover that here momentarily. And I'm copying my strategy one, strategy two trades for the premium members in uh, the seven ETFs that we follow, plus Tesla, BABA. And a couple of selected growth stocks. We did a reshuffle this weekend, uh, and I, you should have received, if you're a premium member, uh, you, you should have received the new Go No Go table. And so you should be ready to go, you know, ready to go for this week. For trading outcomes, we always want to be aware of one, we can win a little, we can, two, we can lose a little, three, we can win big, and four, lose big. Our objective with any trend trading system is to eliminate the big loss. Eliminate number four, and you've eliminated your biggest risk in your trading portfolio. I know some of you have adopted many of the active trend trading rules and are utilizing them and doing quite well because basically they're very simple to follow and you either have a go or you have a no-go situation. Okay, hi guys, I am back. Sorry about that. Okay, thanks, Jim. Yeah. Okay. I don't know where we dropped off, but uh, the most important part you can see and and uh, uh, see us now. And I don't know if the I don't know if the band, bandwidth issue was on. Uh, okay, loud and clear. Great. Uh, I had to switch over to my um, uh, mobile hotspot, and I haven't got a clue. What I'll do is I'll go back here and basically, um, did I drop out before this slide here? If I did, just basically the expectation going into next week. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to glue together. <laughs> I'm going to have to glue together this uh, uh, presentation afterwards. So after, so basically here, talking about the four outcomes of trading. Okay, there we go. So that's what, just a reminder with the four outcomes, potential outcomes of trading. One, win a little, lose a little, win big, lose big. But our objective with any trend trading system is we want to eliminate number four. And we do that by following our rules. Uh, gold, uh, I am patiently waiting for the reversal on gold. I was having a little chat with Eric a little bit earlier today about this, is that, yeah, we can start nibbling a little bit right now to try to, you know, we are anticipating gold to turn around somewhere, but during the month of July hasn't happened yet. And what tends to happen when we're sitting there, you know, kind of looking for the bottom, if you will, the bottom oftentimes cannot show up where we expect it to show up. It's just, you know, that's just the way it is. That's uh, <laughs> And so, but anyway, there's the area that we're looking for. Also, we're looking for something on crude, which is about in, also in the July time frame. Uh, crude had a nice little spurt 
And we don't know if we're the spurt is this one or this one. And so we're waiting for a pullback in crude to be able to jump on board with crude at this point. So uh, I'm going to look at some charts. Happy 4th of July. Remember, that's Wednesday. Uh, the markets will be closed tomorrow at 1 o'clock uh, Eastern time. So after 1 o'clock, go enjoy your family. I, I encourage you to enjoy your family. Enjoy the freedom that you do have. Let's take a look at, let's go here. Okay. Hey, I want to talk really quick about the JNUG uh, trade that we put on a little bit earlier today. Uh, I highlighted JNUG. And this is one of the bonus trades that we are, in fact, doing for uh, all members. You know, uh, uh, as long as you're a signed up active trading members, uh, uh, be sending out up. We do about one uh, bonus trade per month. But then, of course, the premium member, they on the uh, text alerts on when we're putting out the trade and the timings a lot you know, uh, a lot better for them because uh, they get a further heads up. But we're looking at JNUG. And what's JNUG trying to tell us here is, one, we had an uptick. And I mentioned in this weekend's uh, um, review, I did not want this level because it was too close to a, uh, a resistance level by, made by that trend line. We get a kick down, actually gold gaps down today. And, um, uh, but then it basically came and made a uh, uh, kind of a doji type uh, candlestick where we anticipate, okay, it's indecis and indecisive, but we we have a very clear pattern here. One, we pushed up from this low, and so we put a stop loss just slightly below it. That low right there is at 12.91, 11 cents. My stop loss, my stop loss is at $12.80. Uh, and so if I get stopped out on that, you know th that will be even though I bought a you know several you know I bought several hundred shares. I'll show you that about 650 shares. Uh, and but even if I get hit, if that stop loss gets hit, okay, my max loss is only 3.56 percent, or about 325 dollars. On the other hand, when we look at what did uh, we can go back to July of last year, what did JNUG do July of last year with its its run up here? Well, here's what we're anticipating. It doesn't mean, and it's no guarantee that we're going to get this, but Oil does tend to run, yeah, you know, run hot during the, or not oil, but gold, run hot during the July time frame through about September, last part of October. And so as you can see there, uh, it went on a run last year from the July time, about 70%. So if JNUG goes on a, goes on a similar type thing, how far is it likely to bounce from here? Well, let's just take a real quick peek. There we go. And, and what we do is take it from the bottom of the, and if we run up here, as you can see, so there we go, should be able to get 70%. So we're anticipating a move up, you know, 50, 60, 70%. You see, it's going to take it up above. Um, and so that's going to, um, be something to look at that would take yeah, this whole, there we go. There we go. 70, 70% move would be up to about 80. Will we get all of that? You know, uh, will, is this the, the, the seasonal bottom in gold? I don't know. Uh, but I know that we needed to nibble a little bit. I'll share with you just straight up. Here's a couple of things that concern me is one is, TSI on a weekly chart is head, still heading down towards, you know, and it may basically a little bit lower, which may drive prices down to the 12 level. Um, although it did get a reversal on the, inter, the daily TSI and also the intraday TSI to say, hey, I'm ready to bounce back up. Uh, but we can consider this a spinning top doji, decisive, and we should 
you know, f you know, see if gold can get some traction. If it doesn't, that's, you know, we'll just wait for the next one because we know one's coming. Same thing uh, with gold. Gold actually kind of crapped out today. Had a nice bounce up yesterday, but I want to see show you what happened. Gap down and then went down further. It actually dropped below the 200-day moving average right at the low, which is right there at 1740. That held. We dropped 174. Pretty good likely that we may have to revisit down here back at the 11470 uh, uh, level. You know, that may be where gold just says, hey, okay, I'm going to do my seasonal reversal here and give you your 10 to 13%. So if we get kicked out on this particular trade, what I what I am going to do is basically I'm going to hang on, and and just say okay, I will wait until I get a reversal kick to go with my oversold condition, oversold condition, just something uh, that we can do. Here we can I'm going to throw up Tesla. This is what I was talking about with Tesla. Tesla gapped up from here to here. Uh, this morning, so for for a gap from the weekend, it gapped up and opened about there. So about a sixteen dollar gap. It runs all the way up, you know, almost to thirty five uh, to uh, three sixty five. Reverses hard, sells off for the next uh, almost uh, two or three hours, and runs thirty five dollars to the downside. Stops. But it just stops here, runs back up another twelve dollars. So you talk about a, a whipsaw day in Tesla. Here's what I'm looking at for Tesla. One, we get a retest back up in the midsection here, about the three fifty anywhere from three forty five up to three fifty. Anticipate a potential rollover. And we may be getting that a little bit right now, but we may push on back up here to Around, you know, like I said, 348, 345 to 350. Wait for our reversal signal on the intraday chart and then trade it to the downside. Um, we may sell off on the flip side of that even further down to the 50 day moving average, which is about the three, uh, 320 level, or we may just stymie right here. There was a little window here, price at uh, 331 to 330 level of support. That's where it bounced today. Came right dead square to that, and then rebounded eleven to twelve dollars off of that. We will wait because TSI on the daily chart has now turned back down, and uh, once it turns back down, breaks through the zero line. I'm anticipating it's going to drop all the way to the very oversold condition, and we will just see if it accelerates on that. So that's what I've got with. Uh, uh, and let's see, I had, um, I'm just going to cover three quick stocks for you. Oh, Momo. Somebody just look at Momo a little bit earlier on. Momo. Okay, let's see. Ah, you know, Momo, that's, that actually looks looks pretty darn good. I would want to do a um, uh, stock checkup on it. I know the, the, the um, several of the um, uh, IBD premium list, but that's a, that's a, did we get was today's move done on higher volume? Well, no, but it's kind of unfair to judge it based on today's volume because it's holiday volume, and so um, yeah, let that looks pretty kind of interesting. Um, if you're looking to trade Momo. A couple of ways you can do it. If it breaks back out above this uh, 45.56, 45.60 level, you, of course, don't want it to go back any further than the halfway point of uh, that big green candle there. Or if it's if, if it goes back about halfway into the green candle, that would be also a good place to, to get long. So that's a couple of ways you could uh, trade that particular entity. And who had Momo? I, I forgot. Sorry, guys. Okay, um, so anybody else have any stocks we get a little real quick look at? One red dot, yeah, that's not bad. 
as long as the other dots are all green, Michael. <laughs> Let's take a real quick look at um, NVDA. NVDA, I think, is going to be hanging around. It's a, it's a stock that I just don't want to take off of our watch lists because it's getting a similar time that Momo was. Look at that. Okay. And these are basically just, you know, these sell-off reversal, sell-off reversal, sell-off reversal. Um, you know, nice move up today. Volume not above average, uh, but it definitely gave us a point where, hey, buyers wanted to come in right here. Remember, we are below the 50-day moving average, though. That typically is uh, drive side back. That would be an opportunity. Let me see how similar that is to Momo. Come on. There we go. Yeah, well, see, Momo looks a little bit stronger because we're at the 50. We're at the 50. Um, Baba. Real quick note on Bob. Baba also gap down sell up at the lower at you know uh, oversold ticking up a little bit. Um, just wait for some kind of a retracement there again. Uh, volume at just about half uh, half. So yes, Jim, there may especially now that I switched to hot spot. There may be a slight lag in what you're watching uh, on, on the the live. Uh, that will be corrected when the recording comes out. So, okay. Does anybody else have any have any uh, 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 stocks to take a look at? I can't remember. I don't think we covered spy for the S and P. S and P. Does that look kind of similar to Momo? Sure does. We do have a TSI tick up. And so in reality, you know, that makes us a buy. Did we get our TSI tick up on IWQQ and IWM? So I kick up and crossover on, uh, on the Qs. What makes this questionable is we have stuff on the weekly chart over here. Uh, is still pointing down, pointing down. So, and then IWM. Okay. Yeah, that, if I was going to look to get long at any of these entities, I, I think I would look to IWM and, uh, and or TNA. Uh, a nice bounce off of the 50 moving average. Uh, I don't know if I would buy it right here at the uh, uh, 820 combo, but certainly a halfway into the candle would be an opportunity. Or if it breaks out above that tomorrow, that would be also, also an opportunity. And we get, and I'll just show you a little trick. When you get a, a candlestick like that that is right up against the moving averages. You can, in fact, go ahead and take that trade if you want to. It's not, you know, you're up against a level of resistance, not the greatest idea in the world. Uh, but if it fails and drops, if it drops over halfway down this big candle here, that's sometimes you can plan your uh, uh, stops there. Like right there, if it dropped to 163.60, that would be a good stop. Uh, but, again, I would prefer try to buy it off the middle and move up. Or if we get a gap up. Different story, different story. So excellent, David. TQQ and TNA, I, I, I love it. TNA, um, TNA, I was looking at that earlier. Didn't quite get a trigger for the, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, new and revised early warning system. But that, yeah, this, this, is, this looks really good. TNA and TQQ. And those were the two strongest entities on the market. There's a couple more questions here. Uh, CNSL. Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, I know absolutely nothing about this uh, entity. Um, it's got really kind of low volume. You know, it's hitting 735,000, so that's that's enough. Hammer, or a you know, dragonfly doji slash hammer. Stop bullish engulfing today. TSI is trying to tick up. And so very clearly, you know, uh, you could t basically take a trade and if it drops back below this, you know, 1226 level, I would, you know, bail or I'd size it where if I drop below the $12 level, I would be out of the particular trade because it's saying, nope, this was uh, LABU. LABU was doing a, a really nice pullback on Thursday of last week, Hammer. Um, but as you see, it has run up. You know, right up against the 820 combo uh, and stopped. Let's see what it does tomorrow. If we pull back down and hammer out a body, you know, a, a foundation here, that may give us a trigger to the upside. Again, similar situation. If we gap up, if we move above the 820 combo, that would be a, a, a you know, a, a, a time to get in. And then midsection or even the 50 day moving average. Is your ex that may be a really prime uh, type of a uh, trade for LABU because that would be in line with about a four five percent loss uh, max. Big dividend paying stocks. Uh, okay, but well, that's I'll make a note of that. What do they do? Consolidated. Commercial holdings come. It must be a RIT or something like that. Real estate. So. Okay, my friends, that basically is going to cover us for uh, for this afternoon. Again, short um, uh, short week this week. Um, I, I kind of hesitate, you know, jumping into anything you know, full speed. So because of it's a shortened holiday week and you never know what kind of junk's going to happen. Uh, one thing, if you want to be trading though, uh, uh, and, and you don't want to miss out, you know, you know, feel like you're missing out on a trade, take a half position. Uh, I mean, if it, if it runs the direction you want it to run, that's great. But a half position, you protected some of your capital, which is always an important thing to do. So with that, Sorry for the delay in the, in the middle of the, of the, the webinar. I will uh, see how the recording turns out and may have to redo the recording, and, and that's fine. I love you guys. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll do that for us. So with no further ado, we will say aloha and have an absolutely fantastic, fantastic, Fourth of July. God bless everybody. Aloha.